don't know how everything got so bad. The egos, the infighting, the jealousy. It wasn't always like this. Welcome back to our exclusive hour with music industry giants. New edition. That was a moment from BET's epic 2017 miniseries, The New Edition Story, which chronicled the group's four-decade career. It drew in over 29 million viewers. What, those are staggering numbers. Shows don't come close to that anymore. Bobby, I know that you were producers on that project. And I think what made it such compelling television is that you chose to show every side of the group. Why was it important, Bobby, to go that deep and to show that pain, really? It was important because that's what the group is, is made of. The group is made of ups and downs. Uh, we fight hard, we love hard. And we work hard. Uh, so to be able to uh, show everything, you know, in order to get it all out, it was like uh, therapeutic for all of us mm -hmm. to be able to see where we come from and to see where we've where we've gone, you know, and where we are today, you know, yeah. with all of this. It is a phenomenal accomplishment. It's also again going back to the rawness, Ricky. I, I know in this series it was first revealed for the first time that you had been privately battling a drug addiction and it got so bad for you that it created financial issues and all of these things that fans never knew, but for the first time heard from you. Bobby said it was like therapy. What was it like to reveal all of that? It was actually therapeutic. And the reason why I decided to open up about it is because of what was done for me. I mean, during that time in my life, I was filled with so much shame mm -hmm. and that fear of embarrassment is what was killing me. It was keeping me from asking for help and seeking, you know, therapy about it. But, you know, one day somebody told me, listen, you can't save your face and your butt at the same time. Mm -hmm. You have to choose one. Yeah. And um, I chose to save my life. And, you know, being around other men and seeing other men, especially in the business, being that vulnerable, mm. you know, let me know it was okay. So it was quite liberating. And I just wanted to share that in hopes that you know, what was done for me, I could do for someone else. And Bobby, we had a phone conversation not long ago, uh, right after I'd had my son Moses and you and I were talking and we talked about all the, the loss, Whitney, and we talked about Bobby Christina and losing her in 2015 and Bobby Jr. in 2020. I've always thought about how you all had to rally around him and what that meant to be there for him. Even when you got the news about Whitney, you were on tour. And I remember seeing a tweet of the news and people said, where's Bobby? And I was like, oh, he's with them. So at least he's there with somebody. How has it been for you um, with this great loss um, to have them with you? It's been wonderful. Um, my brothers have stuck by me through so many rough times in my life. I'm proud to call them my brothers and my friends. Um, they've, they've lifted me up and they've held me up to, to heights that I can't even find the words to, to, to explain. Um, but they've always been there for me and I appreciate them all. Well, I'm like a giant, um, man. Um, you know, I told him that uh, the measure of a man, right, is in what God allows you to endure to a certain extent, right? And for me, what my brother has gone through, you know, God knew that I wouldn't be able to, you know, manage something like that. So, I mean, I, he walks in giant's shoes at the end of the day. And I love the fact that he's still here and able to really overcome a lot of those obstacles and look at it like, look, mm. there was a mission, there was a purpose for my life. Mm. And one of those things is being right here, you know, with his five other brothers yeah. in front of Tamron Hall, <laughs> in front of all these amazing people yeah. watching us getting ready to move yeah. across the country and do things not just for us, like this is for the culture, right? Yeah. That's the name of the uh, tour. Mike came with that name, right? And on one side of it, it's us bringing our entertainment and putting the people in a space where they can forget about things and just have a good time like they mm -hmm. used to. But then it's also, you know, what are we not just extracting from these cities, but what are we giving back to these ah. cities? You know, how can we connect to organizations that are doing mean meaningful things, you know? Yeah. And I think um, 
we're a reflection to me. When you look at our faces, like the projects and the places that we come from, we were not supposed to make it out. Right. So when you look at us right. and you see our faces, right. people out there that are in those situations know that you can make it out at the end of the day. Right. Right. I just yeah. want to say that for That's sure. Good. As you can see, we're an emotional group. There's so <laughs> many stories. Right. Yeah. And when we see each other, it's subliminal conversation because right. he goes through things. He's going through something now. He goes through things. And we go down the line. I go through things. And the thing that makes it better is when you can sit down with any one of your brothers and tell them how you feel. And he gives you the greatest words of advice and gives you really great love that sometimes, even as a man, you just need to know that you're loved, you're cared for, and someone cares about you.